reduce their ecological footprints while at the same time becoming more livable and equitable places. Next, sitting next to him is Adam Freed. And Adam Freed is the Deputy Director of Mayor Bloomberg's Office of Long-Term Planning and Sustainability, which was charged with developing and implementing New York City's Long-Term Sustainability, sustainability Plan, Plan YC. Since releasing Plan YC, the city has enacted landmark legislation to increase energy efficiency in existing buildings, invested $80 million a year to reduce city government's greenhouse gas emissions, and launched a comprehensive climate resilience program. Adam leads the city's resilience efforts and chairs of the New York City Climate Change Adaptation Task Force. Carolyn Steele, she's the author of Hungry City, and we have just a few copies left in the back, is also an architect and lecturer. Her chief interest is exploring the inner lives of cities. Her work is focused on developing a lateral approach to urban design that looks at the everyday routines that shape cities and the way we inhabit them. And finally, Brian Hallwell is the editor of Edible East End and the co-publisher of Edible Brooklyn and Edible Manhattan magazines, both of which are devoted to chronicling food communities in and around New York City. He's also a senior fellow at the World Watch Institute, which is where his work is focused on organic farming, biotechnology, hunger, and rural communities. So welcome to all of you. Um, the way we like to uh, do the panel tonight is um, I have a question for each of the people up here, and um, we were hoping they'll maybe ask each other questions. Uh, and then Tom will um, open it up to the audience, collect questions, and we'll, we want to have it as interactive as possible. Um, so I'll try to get things started, but then um, it's up to you. So we'll start off, uh, I'll just mention one thing, Adam Freed, uh, who may have to slip out a little early, so we're going to start with him, and um, he's fresh blood to the room today, so that's good for all of us as well. So um, I'd like to ask Adam to just give us an overview of some of the initiatives that uh, the city is doing with regard to food and get us up to date what, about what they've done lately and what they might be thinking of doing, what may be a big vision, maybe give us a little inside look at what or secret look about what might be coming down the line. So, just, just a small question to start with, city. Yes. Um, so, you know, I think I want to open also by, by talking about the scope and the scale of the challenge we face in the city when we're, we're thinking about our food system which is probably one of the largest, most complex, most divergent in terms of the, the individuals who are part of it, and one in which we as a city government have the least control over uh, when looking at that as an issue from a sustainability standpoint. Uh, over $30 billion a year are spent in food in New York City. Uh, we generate about $1.3 billion in economic activity through food processing in the city, uh, something that is a growing and emerging field, about 14,000 jobs currently there. Uh, there's a lot of information that we, we have about where food and how it gets into the city. 22,000 restaurants, 11,000 bodegas, 5,000 grocery stores, 500 green carts, uh, about 300 community gardens, 80% of which uh, we believe have some food production within them, uh, 100 CSA groups, 30 or 20 farms recognized by the USDA. But we actually don't have a lot of information about the food that comes into the city. Uh, the Port Authority estimates about one in four trucks coming through the bridges and tunnels into the city carry food. We know that the Hunts Point Food Distribution Center uh, has about 2.5 billion pounds of produce uh, a year that come through it, but we don't know where it goes once it gets into the city. We don't know uh, how much of that produce uh, makes up what people are eating here. Uh, a real challenge when we think about how do we optimize the system, uh, whether it's for uh, health, whether it's for economic growth, whether it is to reduce truck traffic into the city, congestion, whether it's to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, whether it's to try to reduce the 1.3 million tons a year of food waste that's from the commercial and residential sector. Uh, a lot of challenges within that. So in Plan YC, uh, our comprehensive sustainability plan, released in 2007, updated in 2011. And in 2011, we had a really long, hard debate. Uh, Chris Garvin is here who helps advise us uh, as part of the Mayor of Sustainability Advisory Board. Do we have food as a separate chapter and as an issue to look at? And if we do, what does it mean for all the initiatives that may be in freight, that may be in air quality, that may be in open space and waterways? Or do we have it integrated throughout and how do we call out the fact that there are a number of otherwise unrelated initiatives that come together? 
Uh, and what would our goal be? We have a goal to reduce our emissions 30% by the year 2030. We have a goal to ensure that all New Yorkers live within a 10 minute walk of a park. What is the sustainability goal around food? So rather than having it as a single chapter, uh, we felt it actually lost weight by separating from the issues it was in. I want to give a very quick highlight of some of the, the approach that we took on uh, some of the, the initiatives that we have within the plan. Uh, and I hope that a lot more detail comes up in the questions. Um, so we really looked at it in four ways. How is our food produced? How is it distributed throughout the city? How is it consumed? And then how do we dispose of it? I mentioned that 1.3 million tons a year uh, of waste. And that, that's a real issue for us. We spend about $300 million a year to export our solid waste from the city itself, city government, uh, residential institutions. Uh, so there's an enormous opportunity to try to harness that and reduce the costs. First and foremost, we, we want to survey municipal land in the city to understand what vacant land may be appropriate uh, for farming or for uh, urban agriculture. Uh, we probably won't have all the answer of the survey, but where, where is that land appropriate? Where is it not currently being developed? Uh, what do we know about the environmental contaminants that are there? Is it feasible? Is it usable? And if so, how do we create a process to open it up for use? Uh, we want to continue to facilitate uh, agriculture projects. Uh, we want to open 129 new community gardens at NYCHA houses, uh, New York City Housing Authority, and create the first farm at a NYCHA site. We think there's a tremendous opportunity in the footprint there, uh, both an educational and a public health opportunity there. Uh, we continue to work through our Grow to Learn program, where we park our schools to create gardens within schools. We currently have 2009 gardens and schools, uh, educational component there. And we're really focusing on retaining at least 75% of those gardens uh, year to year. It's not just creating the garden, but how do we ensure that they're sustainable from a, a long-term perspective. Uh, we want to increase the number of volunteers that are Green Thumb Gardens so that we can get more community support for that. Uh, we have a number of pilot projects to see, can you remediate a brownfield into urban agriculture? Uh, none of our land is pristine in the city. All of it has had a former use. Uh, it, it's very different than looking at a greenfield development. Uh, so how do we pilot that? What are the health risks and things that we need to take into account? How do we ensure there are adequate uh, protections? And we also know for food protection, we own about a million acres of land in upstate New York, 150 miles north of the city, in our watershed, where all of our water comes through surface-fed reservoirs. We work very aggressively with urban farmers, or not urban, with agricultural industries in those areas to promote organic uh, farming, to try to prevent fertilizer and runoff into it, to make sure that we can keep our water clean and have healthy organic produce as well. Uh, a number of things that we're doing around production. For distribution, I mentioned the challenge that there's a lot of information we don't have. We don't know where our food comes from. We don't know how much New Yorkers eat. Uh, we don't know where it's coming from. And we want to partner with the New York City Council to actually launch a food distribution study to get a much better sense because we actually can't optimize the system. We can't craft strategic solutions if we don't know the scope of the problem and the challenge that we're facing. I think getting that fact base is the absolute first place that we need to start. And hopefully you'll hear more information on what that is in the next few uh, months. For consumption, uh, a lot of that is supporting the food entrepreneurs that are in the city uh, through a number of uh, new industrial and manufacturing sites that we can produce, provide a low cost space for food production. Uh, I mentioned that we have uh, 300 green cars, 500 green cars throughout the city. We want to permit 1,000 cars throughout the city, uh, particularly targeting those neighborhoods that do not have healthy options and food options and vegetables. Uh, we have a fresh program where we actually have zoning bonuses and financial incentives to get supermarkets to open up the neighborhoods where there's a low penetration of, of food options, high diabetes, high rates of poverty, other uh, qualifications. We have 11 supermarkets that have opened through that program um, to make people have better options. And then disposal, and this is an area where it's a real challenge. How do you capture, and the organic waste is actually very rich, it's a terrific resource. Uh, we have programs to try to capture yellow grease from restaurants and turn it into biofuels. Um, how can we find some pilots and ways to capture that organic waste? Uh, we have a couple of programs we've just launched now, expanded organic capturing and green markets in partnership with Grow NYC. Uh, happy to talk through those. Uh, and, and there's just a, a tremendous amount of energy and excitement around food. We saw that when we were updating the plan. It was one of the most popular topics that people wanted to talk about, but also one of the hardest to bend down when it was. So I, I also think in the next few years, uh, there's a tremendous opportunity to build on what's in the plan now as future administrations come in, so the plan has to be updated once every four years. To put more scope and, and shape around it, particularly making sure it's a data-driven effort. I think that's where a lot of our efforts are going to be now on how do we collect that data to set up the next iteration of the